How's it going, guys? So this is a new video about how to work with adapted cards in a Path Framework Composer. So adapted cards are used in multiple platforms, uh, especially from Microsoft. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to restart uh, to start this bot. So I'll just show you real quick what's uh, this about, and we'll try to implement an adaptive card right below this welcome to our clinic message. So it's going to be something like this one. Very similar. So let me just restart a conversation. And for now we got this message, welcome to our clinic. And then we have this uh, prompt uh, with multi uh, choice and that's it. So uh, the purpose of this video is not to work with this flow, but to add an adaptive card. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stop the bot and then I'm going to add and then I'm going to send a response. But this response is not going to be a text. It's going to be an attachment. Then as an attachment, you're going to add a new attachment, create from template, then you have multiple options here. We're going to be working with adaptive cards. So these are actually more customizable. You have very, uh, let's say, a lot of options for these adaptive cards. So uh, Microsoft is going to show you an example here. So, so it basically gives you a text block with some text here. So let me just change this. And I'll say, hey. I am an example. So this is an adaptive card. It's a very simple one that comes from uh, Microsoft, like uh, the Buff Framework Composer generates that for you, but it's just very simple. So let me just run this and we'll see uh, what's going on. So just open this one, restart the conversation. And here's the card. Hey, I'm an example. So what I want to do now is I'm going to kind of add an image here and another message and some inputs and some other stuff. So it's kind of more fun to work with that. So basically, uh, what B Framework Composer is going to do is going to take this uh, JSON file. It's going to kind of parse it and render uh, that into a UI. So what I'll do now is I'm going to go to the adaptedcards.io slash designer website. So there's a, an example here, a good one. So you'll have this adaptive card here on top. So you have like these options, like set due date, view. These are kind of buttons. You got an image here. You got some text, you got a title. So you're gonna have all of these options in this menu. So you got the elements, you got the inputs here, but if you want to understand really what's going on here, you're gonna click on all of the elements one by one. And then you're gonna see that you have some options here. So this is called a text block this part here. So you'll see that you got a title. This is a bound property. I will see that later in a different video, but I could type something here like, hey, I'm a title or hello. We'll see that. Um, and then you're going to have some options here, spacing, horizontal alignment. If I do center, notice that this moves. So Instead of trying to work over uh, this same card, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new card. But because I don't have any image hosted anywhere, I'm going to take this image from this material from adaptivecards.io, and we're going to do something similar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to new card. But let me just copy this image first so I have it and we can create our first adaptive card. So let's just go to a new card. 
and let's go to blank. And notice that it generates this code for us. So the interesting part here is that you can drag and drop uh, elements uh, or inputs from here to the card. So I'm gonna start with a text block because these cards usually, they have a title, right? So I'm going to create something like, welcome to our clinic. So that's going to be our message, the first message in our adaptive card. So that's gonna be a text block message. Notice that every time that you generate a new element or input or any of these options, the code will generate these properties here. So you'll see that this is a text block. We just generated that. And we'll see that we have the welcome to our clinic message here. Okay, that's perfect. So uh, you have more options here out of the box. Like if you want to, uh, let's say have a size of uh, large, then it, you'll see that it's uh, bigger now. Uh, way, let's say bolder, because it's a title. And let's do something like, I want this to be center. That's perfect. It's looking good. So notice that all of those properties that I just added, they also get added here. And because this this code has like uh, multiple upgrades, like once in a while, there's like different versions. So this one is version 1.6. Um, it is telling us that large shouldn't have any capital letters here. So I'm gonna do something like, okay, large and bolder and center. That's it, okay. Now there's no squiggly lines and we're gonna go with the next property. So I want to have an image right below this welcome to our clinic message. So this is pretty self-explanatory. You got the image element here. So you're just gonna drag and drop right below. So just make sure that you put it here and you got a type image. Notice that the new uh, let's say the new uh, properties will get generated here. So comma, then new properties, comma, new properties. Then this is a, a type image. Then you gotta tell the bot where this image is located. So you gotta say URL, and then you're gonna paste the URL from the same example that we had before. So um, we'll take this one from here and that's it. So notice that we got a card here and let's try to probably put a couple of more things so it looks more, you know, like a real card. So if I click on this image, you'll see that there's also some options here, height, size, width in pixels, height in pixels. So I'm not going to modify that for now, but you guys can play around with that for sure. Background color, okay. So um, let me just try to add an input text property right below the image. And just be really careful of this, you know, these inputs, they have to have a unique ID. So that's going to be the way that Composer actually gets the data from your car. So if someone types something here, it has to be stored in a variable, but that has to be identified by an ID. So I'm going to call this uh, input that text appropriate as a, text one, that's going to be my ID for that one. Um, because the purpose of this video is just to kind of play around with this and show you an adaptive car. I'm just going to put a, let's say input date. 
I'll drag and drop it. Now it's here. So again, the same. So I'm going to have an ID for this one. So months one. That's going to be my ID for that one. And let's try to put, uh, I don't know, input toggle. So I'll drag and drop again. Input uh, toggle. Again, you can click on this option and you can modify what you want. So I want to change the title here. So I'll say satisfy it. So maybe are you like satisfied with the clinic service? So that's going to be my option. So the user could click on this or maybe not. You know, these are just options. And let's try to get another one. Um, maybe I'll try to, so we got the input text, input date, input toggle, maybe an input time. I don't know, let's try it. So input type here. Notice that you can actually drag and drop from here. So if you think this is better at the bottom, sometimes it's a little bit complicated to drag it and drop it. But if you have that issue, you could just like uh, copy the property here, actually cut it and paste it wherever you want. So if I want this property, I got the very bottom, I'll just, uh, hit Control X, Control V here after a comma, and then you're gonna have it at the bottom. Okay, I feel like the last option I'm gonna hit is the text block. I'm just gonna have like a goodbye message or something like that. So I would say something like, thank you for your feedback. And that's it. So I want this to be bigger because it's like, a, an kind of important message so i will say that i want that to be centered and notice how the center option appears here and if i try to add a different option here um let's say okay i want that to be bigger right so i'll go to styles font type sorry size and now I'll do that extra large. And now I'll do that green. So that's it. All right. So let's try to actually render this adaptive card in our real bot. Uh, but let me just double check if I have all the IDs for all the properties, because if I don't have those IDs, then the bot's not gonna render. So ID, ID, this one doesn't have an ID, so I'll have this uh, check one. Let me just go here to the time, the input that time, so I'll say time one. So, okay, that's it. All right, all I have to do now, it's just, Hit Control A. I'm gonna copy that. I'm going to go to my bot. I'm going to replace this option. And I'm going to paste it. Just make sure that you have these three kind of uh, single quotation marks at the end and at the beginning. The code has to be inside those. And the other thing is that Bot Composer doesn't support this 1.6 version. Maybe later, but for now it doesn't. So I'm gonna have like version 1.3. Let me just restart this and let's see if the adaptive card works or not. Okay, open the web chat. We start a conversation and there you go. You have your adaptive card. So in a different video, I'll show you how to actually grab these properties, whatever you type here, if you have like a 
uh, a year or a time or some of these properties, like you need to actually get that and send it to a different dialogue or a different like option. We'll see that in a different video. But for now, what we did was, well, try to assign an adaptive car. So uh, if you notice that you actually got the hang of it and you know how to all these properties work and everything. So you could actually go and change the code from here. So if you notice that, oh, you know, I don't like that placeholder. So placeholder text. So you just come here and you type your message. So type your opinions here. And then if you run the bot again, you'll see that that specific uh, option is going to change without the need of, you know, going to the designer again. So open web chat, restart the bot, and you'll see that type your opinions here now shows up. So that's basically how you guys design these adaptive cards with the help of uh, this uh, website. There's a bunch of options. Just try to make sure that you don't forget the, to change the version for Bot Composer. Maybe in a future, you won't have to do that, but for now you have to. And just try to put the IDs for these input properties. That's pretty much everything for this video. I hope you guys like the video and I'll see you in the next video.